Hi, so back with another video after several years of doing none. I got an email from YouTube saying hurry up and make another video, so I'm having a go now. Um, I thought I'd give it a go on the video showing how to use shaders in RetroPie. It's one of the biggest things when you play a retro game, I think, if you played them originally in the 80s and 90s, the graphics on modern TVs look significantly different. So I'm just going to run through how you can quickly and easily change that setting so you get that, that retro feel. Now I'm not sure of how this video is going to come out, I've just plugged everything back in after years of not doing anything with it. So I've got an old Elgato HD60 plugged into the Pi, going into USB, into the PC. The microphone doesn't work because so I've lost the cable that it needs to go in the back of the snowball thing. So I've got a gaming headset on which means the audio lags weirdly when I play it back to myself, but it'll do because it's the only microphone I can find at the moment. And luckily, Elgato still seem to make the software I need to run the old hardware. That seems to work, so we'll see how it goes. Anyway, what this is is the latest version of RetroPie as of 26th of February 2022, which I think is 4.7.1. Um, it's on a RetroPie 3, or a Raspberry Pi 3, you know, shows how long since I've recorded one of these. And all I've done to it is I've enabled SSH so I can copy a ROM across. And that's pretty much it by configuring a wired controller. I've not changed this at all, so it's just as it is. So, um, yeah, I'll run on with it. And as always, if you need details, you're much better off looking at wikis or documentation. This video is just going to be more of a sort of waffle run through of how it works. So, um, I know I put a ROM on here, so I'm going to choose Mega Drive. If I go in there and open the ROM, it, everything will be default, so the graphics look um, unaltered, if you like. There it says the um, emulator's Genesis Plus GX, which is relevant, and it's prefixed with the LR, which means Liberetro. So, that means we can use a certain type of shader. So already, I, mean, I don't know how clear it is, but you can see it's not, well, it's certainly not how games used to look on a CRT, that you'd have one of those big box back in the 80s and 90s. It, it looks a bit odd. If I get into the game here, start this up, choose Axel. Okay, so here we go. Now, those graphics, I mean, yeah, it's totally playable. You can see what's going on. The graphics are clear. They're just not very um, traditional in terms of what you'd see on a CRT. And, and in some ways quite blocky. There's not very much, it doesn't look like there's much detail. Um, but I'm sure you could easily get used to this. I just think there's much better options, which is why I'm gonna show shaders. So obviously on YouTube, you can just pause this and have a look more closely at that how the lines go. I think particularly on Axel's like white t-shirt, there's loads of literal white space. It's it's quite sort of blocky and you know I want to say it's not much it's not very detailed. But let's have a look. So now that's that's the default. Now let's change it. If I press pause, the quickest way of doing this um, on the fly is in game. But I'll I'll show you how to do it out of game as well. So in game, I've hit pause, that's what the graphics like for default, and to get into the RetroArch user interface to change the settings for you, because you can do it the, the command line side of things, but you know it's a lot easier using the UI if you don't want to get faff about with SSH and everything. So, to get to the RetroArch menu, you hold down your hotkey and hit X, so in my case that's select, so I'm going to hold down select, tap X, and I get this menu, which is RetroArch. I'm not sure which version of RetroArch this one is now, I'll have to check, but it's probably relatively up to date um, and you get a load of options now if I scroll up it'll loop down the bottom and then I'm going to choose shaders because that's what I want to demo so go into shaders and here um, by default that it looks like they're on but there isn't one chosen so it's kind of like using it but not using it if you click right here you could turn it off fully but I don't think there's any difference between on and not having one specified and off anyway we want it on and all we're going to do we're not going to go and tweak um, the stack loader settings, we're just going to load a preset. So load shader presets, and you can see 
RetroPie packages it all up with various different um, presets uh, shaders. All of these individual ones here that have got preset next to it, .gl, SLP, are shaders. Um, they all work slightly differently, and it's a case of personal taste. You can try various ones. But the two that are really popular, um, one is CRT-Pi, so you've got a bunch here, and further down, I think it's Z, something that we'll look at in a minute. Um, but for the CRT-Pi, there's four here, but really there's only kind of two, because one is standard, like here, CRT-Pi, and then one's vertical. So vertical, obviously, for games that run vertically, like, you know, shooters that go up and down the screen. But, you know, Streets of Rage isn't, so... I'll just use this CRT Pi for an example. The curvature ones are just literally the same, but the edges bend a little bit to give that added extra attempt to emulate the CRTs that sort of bent at the sides. Um, we'll give that one a go again in a minute as well. But to choose CRT Pi, I just select it there, and I'm going to press A, or whatever your select button is on your controller. And then we know we've selected it, because down here it's got shader, and the first shader is CRT Pi. And you've got extra settings that we don't need to worry about here. I think shader passes will take up more CPU if you increase this number, but it might give you a slightly better video output. But either way, it's fine as it is. Um, you don't need to save it. Um, you, it will just um, save automatically. You don't need to apply the changes unless you change the shader passes. So it's fine like it is. Um, I guess if you save it for this game, it will always remember that setting, which you might want. But for the minute, I am I don't need that. So I'm just going back by pressing B, and then if I scroll down, it'll loop up the top, and then I can press resume. And now that you can, I can already see, particularly on that T-shirt area, it's put scan lines across effectively, and you can almost sort of make out more individual pixels. Although you know, it's obviously it's emulated, but that just looks a lot more natural, and how the original game would have looked, and how the makers of most games knew that the uh, um, games would look because they'd be played on CRT so it's kind of a bit closer to what everyone was intending really but again it's all personal choice but I think that looks much better so if I play a bit here it's a great game brilliant game okay I like that move you can do when they throw you and then you can just press up and jump and just land on your feet back in action there. I think double tap and that. It's a big uppercut. Anyway, I'm getting straight to the point is um, look at the graphics there, particularly the, the text at the top where it says Axel. Um, you can see quite clearly really the, the scanline emulation. Um, generally it looks really good and I don't feel as though this has slowed it down at all. Adding a shader will take a bit more CPU effort out of the Raspberry Pi but um, these are designed specifically for the Pi, so you know it's pretty minimal and it works really well. I think that looks significantly better than the default, um, which you can sort of flip back to in the video and have a look there. So let's try another one. Press pause, uh, hold select, hit X, um, scroll up, choose shaders, go to load shader preset, and let's try the one with a curvature on. So that one, CRT Pi curvature, select A. There we go, selected it down the bottom there. And press B to get back to this menu, scroll down and resume. There you go, it's the same as before, but you can see that sort of um, bowed effect at the end. And what a lot of people do as well, and I'll do another video about it, or I might have done one from years ago, it would be worth looking through. You can apply an overlay, so that black um, section of the screen, rather than stretch out the video to fill it up, which would make the aspect ratio look weird, everything would be a bit stretched and out of shape not good. You can put a, a graphic down the side, so like uh, the side of an arcade cabinet or the side of an old TV or something to sort of make it feel a bit more natural. So, And that works really well when you've got something like this where it's a bit um, sort of curved. I think it works better if it's curved and it's got a graphic with, where it's like this and it's just black at the side. It kind of looks a bit weird. Um, I think I might prefer the square version. Um, but yeah, again, as with everything, personal preference. Um, okay, so that's the curved one. And let's give the other one a quick go. So um, back here, back to shaders, um, load presets. If I scroll up, I loop to the bottom. And it's this Zfast one, which is really popular as well. I think it uses even less CPU power than the 
CRT one above. Um, again, you've got the vertical ones, and the curved ones, and LCD standard. I'm not sure the what they're going for on the LCD one to emulate LCD. I don't know. I don't like it though. If I select that and then go back to uh, resume the game, then here you can see. I don't know. It doesn't really do it for me. I don't like this one. It looks too heavy on the sort of lines that are showing. Too many for me. I don't. I'm not mad about that one. Again, I'm sort of checking the the white T-shirt as the main reference point. Cause good example of where it's um, having an effect. Okay, let's try another one. Uh, ba -ba -ba, hold select, press X, go to shaders and where is it? Uh, preset and we'll go for standard, standard because it's not a vertical game, which is that one. And we we'll go back and go resume and have a look at this one. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, I'm not seeing a massive difference over that original uh, CRT by one I chose. Um, although I think I slightly prefer the tip. It looks like there's more definition on that other one for like where the, the lines are appearing. But this is sort of a lighter touch maybe and you might prefer this view. Or you might prefer no shader at all and just run with how it comes out of the box, which is obviously still fine, but I think you know it's worth experimenting with the shaders to get that visual experience that you're really after. Um, so last one, if I quickly go back in here, have a look at shaders, um, presets, you can see down here, you, there's loads to choose from and try out. Um, some of them more, I think some of them might be default retroarch ones that aren't necessarily geared for the Pi experience, but still play about with them. Looks like somebody's got one specifically to make Game Boy games look good. Um, and you can choose a given shader for an entire system rather than just a specific game. Um, so you don't have to um, set each individual game as you want. You can just go to say, I want the Mega Drive ones to all be like this. Um, so let's have a look at that now. If I hold down select and tap start, I quit back to the main screen. And we're going to go to um, the RetroPie options in here. And we're going to choose Configuration Editor. And I'm going to try and remember where the options are. Again, you can do this by um, command line if you want, but um, it's probably easier a lot of the time to go through here. Uh, configure basic, yeah, I think it's configure basic lib retro. Now, that lib retro, again, remember that, that's important because the shaders only work with lib retro emulators, so the prefixed with LR. Um, the other emulators, some of them have their own built in shader options, but um, it's a different type of system. So, configure basic ones. Here we go. So, I want to configure the default. Um, for <coughs> excuse me, for Mega Drive, where is it? There we go, Mega Drive. So go into there, and then down here you can see video shader enable and set is like the default option, which I guess is enabled, um, and then video shader file. So here you get the same list that we saw in the RetroArch user interface, but this is just in the configuration file. So I could say I want CRT Pi for all my Mega Drive games. Hit OK there, it saves it there. And then I can just say um, OK. Oh no, wait, I don't want to go OK. I want to go cancel to take me back a level. Um, cancel, cancel. And what should happen if I go into Mega Drive, the Mega Drive one, it should automatically load up that shader. So play that. Shouldn't take a second. OK, so it's thinking of it. You can see LR Genesis, that's the emulator we're using. That's my controller in the corner. And yeah, you can see it already on that Sega logo. The scan lines are kicking in. That looks much better. Um yeah, so any questions? And this is this is what, like a quarter of an hour video I've done? Was it five minutes? I can't tell anymore. I don't know how this software works. But if you've got any questions, put it in the comments. I'll be happy to get back to you. Hopefully it's been useful to show you how to get a different video output when you're playing your retro games and um, hope to make more videos soon. Thanks very much for watching.